Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Kalibi, and this lecture pertains to the chronic lymphocytic leukemia, small lymphocytic lymphoma, and pro lymphocytic leukemia of hematology and transfusion medicine board review made simple. Case report 65 year old male presenting with cervical, axillary, and inguinal lymphadenopathy. WBC counts of 76,000 with 90% lymphocytes, hemoglobin 9, platelets 89,000, palpable splenomegaly on exam, peripheral blood flow cytometry revealing a clonal population of B cells, which are CD20 positive, CD5 positive, CD23 positive, CD38 positive, ZAP70 positive, smart cells appreciated on peripheral smear. Normal PT PTT, peripheral blood fish revealing 17p deletion. B cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a lymphoproliferative disorder manifested by a clonal expansion of mature, long lived B lymphocytes. B cell CLL can run in families, mostly seen in elderly white males, whereas T cell CLL seen mostly in Asia. Immune phenotype is CD19 positive. CD20 positive, CD5 positive, CD23 positive, remember mantle cell will be CD23 negative, and CD10 negative. Clinical complications include autoimmune diseases, such as autoimmune hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia, increased incidence of secondary malignancies, such as skin, prostate, and GI, immune deficits predisposing to infections, and transformation potential to more malignant lymphomas called Richter's transformation. If you're asked a question on the boards about a patient with CLL not presenting with unrelated symptoms, think secondary malignancy. Cytogenetics are extremely important in CLL slash SLL with 13Q deletion reporting a good prognostic indicator, which is the opposite of multiple myeloma, where 17P deletion is a very poor prognostic indicator, that's P53 deletion. 11Q is a poor prognostic indicator, and trisomy 12 is an intermediate risk. Other good prognostic markers are ZAP70 negative, CD38 negative, Ig variable heavy chain gene mutated, and poor prognostic markers are ZAP70 positive, CD38 positive, Ig variable heavy changing unmutated. Minimum criteria for a diagnosis need at least 5,000 lymphocytes in peripheral blood that demonstrate clonality on peripheral blood flow cytometry. If you have less than 5,000 lymphocytes in peripheral blood which exhibit clonality, then this is called monoclonal B cell lymphocytosis, like MGUS and myeloma. 1% will progress each year, and you may observe these patients. There are two primarily staging systems, the first being the RISE staging system, with stage zero being lymphocytosis in blood or bone marrow, stage one, lymphocytosis plus enlarged nodes, stage two, lymphocytosis in enlarged liver or spleen with or without lymphadenopathy, stage three, lymphocytosis plus anemia with or without enlarged liver, spleen, or lymph nodes, and stage four, lymphocytosis plus thrombocytopenia with or without anemia, enlarged liver, spleen, or lymph nodes. The Binet staging system is based on stage A, two or less lymphoid-bearing areas enlarged, stage B, three or more lymphoid-bearing areas enlarged, and stage C, presence of anemia or thrombocytopenia. Treatment, if patient's asymptomatic, then may monitor. If patient is symptomatic, has rapid lymphocyte doubling time, presents with steroid unresponsive autoimmune phenomenon, cytopenias, B symptoms, or has bulky disease, then may consider chlorambucil or cyclophosphamide, RCBP, FCR, and remembering that fludarabine may cause C cell deficiency leading to CMV or PCP infections, elemtuzumab, as part of either initial induction or for relapse disease. Remembering that alentuzumab may cause T-cell deficiency as well, leading to PCP, 
CMV, fungus, or HSV infections. So use antiviral, antibiotic, antifungal, and PCP prophylaxis. Remember, alentuzumab may clear residual bone marrow disease, but not diffuse neural disease. So it's not effective in bulky disease. And it has activity in 17p deletion, which is the worst prognostic group. Another option is arbendamustine, and you may consider allogeneic stem cell transplants if patient has 17p deletion with early relapse, which is a very poor prognostic indicator. Important CLL slash SLL clinical features, Coombs positive autoimmune hemolytic anemia and immune thrombocytopenia. Treat with steroids, one milligram per kilogram, and begin to taper once the destruction is controlled. Rituximab, danazole, and cyclophosphamide may also be considered. Remember that fludarabine can exacerbate autoimmunity in CLL. Patients may also develop hypogammaglobulinemia, which can lead to increased infections with encapsulated organisms. Treat this with monthly IVIG. Pure red cell aplasia may also develop, characterized by the disappearance of red cell precursors from the bone marrow and a profound reduction in the absolute reticulocyte count. Treat with red cell transfusion and immunosuppressants, such as cyclosporin. Treatment of relapsed disease may include RCHOP, arbendamustine, arpentostatin, arcladribine, alentuzumab, lenalidomide, remember it can cause initial flare reaction with increasing painful lymphadenopathy. Treatment for this would be low dose steroids. Ofatumumab, new fully humanized anti-CD20, which has higher binding affinity than rituximab and induces complement dependent cytotoxicity. There's no role for autologous transplant, and if the patient is young, allogeneic stem cell transplant may be curative. Breakthrough transformation. 10% will transform to a very aggressive high-grade lymphoma, which is a very poor prognosis. Think of a patient with CLL who has worsening LDH, new B symptoms, fever or weight loss, hypercalcemia, rapidly enlarging lymphadenopathy, or increasing SUV avid nodes on PET scan. The treatment? Subtle reductive therapy that consists of chemotherapy and immunotherapy, after which allogeneic stem cell transplantation is performed as a post-remission therapy. Pro-lymphocytic leukemia, PLL, case report. 75-year-old man presenting with weight loss and early society with massive hepatosplenomegaly. WBC 130,000 with 90% lymphocytosis and peripheral blood flow cytometry revealing clonal population of B cells expressing dense surface IgM. Remember, CLL is usually dim. FMC7 positive, CD5 positive, and CD23 negative. PLL is more aggressive than CLL. The name prolymphocyte is actually a misnomer as the tumor cells in this disease are mature activated B cells. Patients typically present with a rapidly rising white blood cell count more than 100,000 and massive splenomegaly. Immunophenotype is similar to mantle cell lymphoma, CD5 positive, CD23 negative. So be careful not to confuse the two. Remember, if patient presents with lymphocytosis, CD5 positive, CD23 negative lymphocytes, and has translocation 1114, this is not considered a leukemic variant of mantle cell lymphoma and not PLL. Among patients with B cell PLL, prognostic features that suggest a poor outcome include anemia, thrombocytopenia, advanced age, and the presence of P53 mutation, the 17P deletion. Treatment consists of fludarabine or clacarine based therapy. You may consider alentuzumab. If symptomatic splenomegaly, then splenectomy is an option. Thank you. This concludes the CLL, SLL, and PLL chapter.